What is up crew? It's your boy K7 and on today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do clothing like a pro. And in particular, I'm going to be showing you guys my study techniques to help you master clothing in whatever style, way and pace that you want. Now, if it's your first time here, welcome in. My name is K7 and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture perspective to all things character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are into some free art education, make sure to follow on Twitch and also subscribe and like and all of that stuff over on YouTube. But with that being said, let's get right into today's topic. Now, interestingly enough, when it comes to doing clothing, there is a vast number of ways to approach clothing, depending on the style, depending on the look, depending on the type of clothing even. And so I'm going to be teaching you guys not exactly how to do clothing, because I feel like there's so many different ways to do that. Instead, I'm going to be giving you guys tools and tick, uh, not ticks. That's weird. I'm going to give you guys tricks and tips to hopefully help you uh, figure out how you can approach some of these things at your own pace, right? And so generally speaking, when it comes to studying, I actually like to do three things. Now, the three things is generally these. One, I like to have a specific subject in mind. Two, I like to have a particular focus. And then last but not least, I like to make sure I'm having some sort of process to review all the things that I'm studying. Now, if you're kind of unfamiliar with all of those things that I've mentioned, or if you're still in my chat figuring out if I'm going to be giving you ticks, let me explain. All right. So when I'm talking about um, having a particular subject in mind, what I really want is to have something clear and specific in terms of what it is I want to study. Sometimes I've had days where I'm like, I want to study anatomy. But like, what does that mean? Anatomy, there's so many parts of the body from the head, the arms, the legs to even the feet. And even if you look at a particular part of the body, like let's say the head, there's a skeletal anatomy, there's the muscular anatomy, there's the proportions, right? So there's so many different aspects and avenues of studying. And so the more specific you can get on a particular time or day that you want to study, it will really help you out a lot. So for today, for example, I want to study clothing, but I'm not just going to study any type of clothing. I want to focus particularly on studying clothing for drawing trench coats. So long leathery type fabrics that kind of drape down. And so I'm choosing a particular focus, which will then uh, or a particular subject, which then will make it easier for me to grab the references that I want. Also, by the way, if you guys do want to join in on today's stream or today's YouTube video, go hop over to my Discord channel. And every single time that I'm live, so right now, for those of you watching on Twitch, every single time that I'm live, guys, you can actually go on my Discord channel and take a look at this. You guys can bada bing bada boom grab today's references that you can use you can take a look at what we did last stream over here you can grab this resource and i'm also giving you guys two additional resources that i've made out here one is for the fundamentals of form and then this one over here is for the muscular anatomy of the back which we'll probably use a little bit later but all right there you go we got all of these resources again these are free to grab on the discord channel while i'm live so if you're watching on stream make sure to type in exclamation mark uh discord especially for the people who are new here but anyways after having a particular subject in mind, the next thing I like to do is have a particular focus. So within this subject, what exactly am I looking to study and or how am I going to study, right? So here is an example of clothing. We're studying trench coats, but here I'm going to be studying the tension. I'm going to be looking at how the folds are working. And so I'm looking at gravity. We're looking at how things overlap and we're looking at overall, why do the folds happen the way that they do, which is a very different type of focus from this type of study that we also did, which was focusing instead more on the shape design of clothing, right? So here I'm looking, okay, instead of looking at clothing and the folds and all that, I want to see how the folds create shapes and how we can utilize some of those shapes in our own designs and maybe help the viewer be more informed about certain parts of the body, maybe the deltoid, the triceps, and all the little muscular components. So having that focus, I think, is really important. And then last but not least, the probably the, the most important part of all of this, this study approach is having a way to review. 
Now, the reason why I say this chat is because I know for a fact that when I was, you know, first starting out and doing my own self-study and stuff, I would watch a bunch of YouTube videos. Maybe I'd binge a couple for an hour, maybe two hours or so. And I feel like I've learned so much, right? But not until you do it yourself and then actually realize what it is that you're missing and what you've understood, will you truly, I feel, learn something. Put an F in the chat if you know what I'm talking about for those of you live. You watch the YouTube video and you're like, oh, I get this. How to draw hair, how to draw hands, easy. And then the moment you grab your pencil and you actually try to draw it yourself, you're like, uh, yo, what the hell, bro? These hands look like trash. You know what I'm saying? And so really it's important for you to practice the things you're studying and then make those comparisons and see what actually looks right and what doesn't. So there's a couple things you can do and I'll give you guys two examples here. One of the examples I like to do is I like to try to draw it myself. So basically taking here the, the reference and then drawing it myself and then trying to do a comparison, right? Am I still keeping track of the same elements that I studied here and do they still hold true in my design. Similarly, what I like to also do is sometimes draw from imagination. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put the reference away and then I'll try to draw it from imagination and see if I can still keep the same principles, the same things that I studied, and then bring back the reference and make a comparison that way. So these are just some of the examples that, uh, that you can do. But I would say in terms of studying and all of that stuff, those are going to be the three things that I look for whenever I'm studying anything. And this is actually good advice that you could use, not just for art, but I used it a lot when I used to be a software engineer back when I was studying computer science. And so you can apply this approach for a lot of different subjects if you are struggling with studying. I know there are many different ways to study, so, you know, keep that in mind. But with that being said, guys, uh, this is a live stream uh, and this is a live stream video. So for those of you watching on YouTube, the way that I do videos out here is a little different. I'll give you guys all the crazy info and all of that stuff. But then we also kind of just hang out here and also draw. And I'll actually give you guys real time examples of what we're talking about here. So don't think of this as just some random fast paced video. I want you guys to really watch this video, draw along and get that value out of it. If that is what you're looking for. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example here and let's see if we can kind of break this one down. So oftentimes when I was a beginner artist and let me know, by the way, let me know if this is something you did when you were, uh, when you were a beginner. When I was first starting out and I used to draw clothing for my characters, I used to draw every line. I'd be like, oh man, let me add this little, let me add this wrinkle right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that, that looks good. Put an F in the chat if you've ever done that when you were drawing clothing or you know what? Maybe you still do it. I used to think this is how I would, this is how you're supposed to draw clothes. Like you have to draw every little detail. Like if I'm copying from a reference, like I had to draw every little wrinkle, but then I'd be like, Ooh, do I draw this line or do I add this line? Like maybe, maybe I'm supposed to add this line or maybe you're kind of like, okay, I add this line, but I don't really know why I'm adding this line, you know? So, so a good, a good tip here is or as i said earlier a good tick here <laughs> is to really look at some of the the forms and instead of looking at all the details really try to understand why some of the folds are happening the way they are right so in this case right here i'm going to simplify the clothing and i'm just going to say all right we have here the clothing and it's wrapping around the form and why is it doing that right so when you're when you're self studying you really want to ask yourself don't just be like okay i'm going to copy this this is cool but really ask yourself why is this happening the way it is so there's a couple of reasons and and i'll i'll try to give you guys my answers but you know i want you also to think about it yourself but a couple of the reasons here is that one, we have here the fabric, it, the, the seam of this clothing, right? So the sleeve here is stitched, stitched onto uh, the body. And so that's going to create some tension right over here, right? This is some tension points right here as the fabric wraps around. Two, the other thing that's happening here is that the arm is cylindrical. And so you're going to get the wrapping of the forms. Whereas down over here, notice how the fabric is just going to drop down, right? like so. But here, because the arm is cylindrical, it's actually going to wrap around the forms and you can kind of see how that motion is consistent here, right? It's not like a straight line. There's a bit of a curve there 
to each of these uh each of these uh, folds that are coming in. So paying attention to that is gonna be also really important. But the third thing that's happening here and why I believe these folds are happening is also because the character is rotating their arm. So you can imagine, right? Imagine this, Dude, also look at my tan, what the heck, sheesh. Um, anyways, you can imagine if you have the fabric like this and if you rotate your arm, notice what happens. Now I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but notice here, let me zoom in. Okay, it zoomed into my face. Notice how when you rotate it, look what happens. The fabric is gonna get twisted into, pay attention here, the motion of the rotation, right? So if you're rotating the arm inward, the folds are also going to go inward. If you rotate your arm outwards, the folds are gonna go outwards. Same thing here with the torso, right? If you're gonna rotate your arm this way, right shoulder goes here right see that shoulders going forward look at where the motion is going to be now in this case it's going to be a little bit different but you, this, this is what i'm trying to say is look at the motion and look at the folds in the rotation so here you're going to have some folds going uh, this way but then you're also going to have a lot of the folds the opposing loose folds going the opposite way so you want to pay attention to that sometimes it'll go the same direction Sometimes it won't. It depends on the material that you're dealing with. So in this case right here, we got this nice juicy arm. I'll kind of, uh, I'll draw it out as a cylinder like this, right? You can imagine if there was an arm right here. So that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm viewing here, right? This rotation of this form wrapping around um, the arm there. Let's see. Let's let's read some stuff in the chat. It's just tension, TBH. I think King of Fighters sp uh, sprites are a good example. Yeah. So you can take a look at some examples as well, right? So looking at other art styles and seeing how other artists represent uh, clothing can also be a great way to widen your knowledge and and your approach for studying things too. That's a great call out. Also, thank you for the follows too, Sophie 3 and also Majestic Rat. Appreciate you guys tuning in to the live stream out here. We're also doing a little bit of a YouTube video. But anyways, let's kind of keep going here with this breakdown. So we've got here this fabric, right? And this fabric is going to go down like so. And you'll kind of see as it's kind of getting lower here, notice how the fabric starts to kind of get loose. Now, the reason why it's getting loose is actually pretty simple. It's one, the fabric is a loose fabric, but also there's gravity involved. So you can kind of see here, this is what's happening, right? As the arm kind of goes down and it's a loose fabric, you're going to see some gravity. But take a look at this. Look here how the folds are also still going to wrap around the arm. It's beautiful. Like once you spot it, you're like, wait a minute. Kasem, my eyes are opened. Because now all of a sudden, these folds, guys, they're not random folds anymore. They're not random lines they're starting to start make sense, right? They're, they're piecing together there. And so now you have something like this and we'll keep that simple and then we'll do it on a different color. Let's do maybe like a blue, let's do a different one, like green maybe. Let's do like a purple color, purple. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this one. Now look at this, what is happening here, right? We have a lot of folds going in here onto uh the bunching here so here first of all you have noticed how the this is so beautiful this guy's back beautiful why because it's straight here and why is it straight because all the tension all the compression is happening on the front side and so to oppose all the folds and stuff this is sometimes the simplicity and beauty of art is notice how naturally the eye will create tension where the folds will be and then the opposing area will be nice and smooth so here boom smooth back we got a little bit of a bump right here for the fabric and then smooth right here and then notice how it follows that gesture right it's all going towards here where the tension is going to be so pay attention to those things and here look at this fabric goes here boom 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 over here fabric goes here right and then we have the remaining fabric of the clothing so you want to pay attention to the subtle details and look for again the tension points and all of that stuff so let's say we've done all this and we're like, okay, cool, Kasem. Yeah, we've we've mastered and understood some of the basic principles of this. The question now, guys, is can we apply this to our own drawings? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put away the reference and let's actually take a look and see 
let's go ahead and see here if we can utilize some of these things. So let's take a take a quick break here to just write down some notes. So uh, some things that I'm looking at here that I want to try to emulate is going to be one. I want to pay attention to the tension points and uh, rotation, um, fabric looseness. I can't spell loose. I'm making up words. Okay, looseness might not be a word, but you know what I mean, right, chat? <laughs> fabric looseness and gravity so like how do those two things play together and then the last thing i want to call out again is the contrast right contrast of um contrast of detail so we have here this is more of a stylistic thing but notice how again this area here uh low detail here high detail you see that so it shifts. We're following the motion of the folds and the tension, and it's shifting away towards that, that area. Um, other things that we can call out too is we can also look at the size of the folds. So this can be caused by a couple things. Let's maybe pick a new color for this one. Um, maybe we'll do like a green. We like green out here. So noticing here, for example, this section right here right we have uh let me do it on a new color so we have like this section right here noticing that shape versus this larger shape right here right so there's going to be kind of these like interesting kind of shapes here let me do a different color um let's do this one in like a blue color and then we'll do this one in like a green color oops my bad so like paying attention to some of these shapes is what I'm looking at. So whenever I'm studying stuff, I'm trying to see how we can simplify a lot of these components. Because again, we could like a look at like look at all this, right? If we grouped all this away and put it away, look at all the details that are here. You could take a look at this and just try to copy the reference. Like that's totally possible. You could do that and see if you can get some value. But sometimes being able to learn the simple core fundamentals of what's going on here will not only help you understand this particular reference but pay attention to this it'll also help you understand how to do clothing in general right so if you think about it it's like do you want to spend a lot of time figuring out and mastering the details of one reference or do you want to spend time understanding the general ideas so that you can use it for all different types of clothing so the more value you can get out of your studies, I think the better. But now is going to be the very important step here where we're actually going to take the character and let's go ahead and see if we can apply some of these, um, you know, these details and stuff to our own drawing. So let's go ahead and draw out a torso like show. And we'll kind of see how it all goes. Also, for those of you watching live, thanks for the follows. We got here Fursa and we've got here um the hex ghosts appreciate you guys uh tuning in here for those of you who are watching live i'd love to know how you guys uh found my stream what brought you guys over here today did you guys uh find me from recommended from the my youtube channel perhaps maybe you found me from i don't know my instagram yeah unless you'll have every detail of a specific reference yeah that's true like i mean i'm not saying like don't study the details i think the details are great to study but in general, if you're looking to, there's a difference, right? Between your goal is to study detail versus to study general clothing. So that could be your focus. Maybe your focus is that you want to study um, the particular details. In that case, your approach would be very different here. So in today's stream, my study is going to be on understanding how clothing and folds and all of that stuff interact with each other. So it's going to be a little bit of a different uh, a, a different focus than if my focus was, man, I really love the jacket and I want to understand exactly how this particular jacket works in this pose. So, so it all, it can, it can all vary, uh, greatly depending on what it is that you want to focus on. But I think even that in itself is already a good step in the right direction because something I used to do as a beginner chat, um, was that I would, if I saw a reference, I would just be like, oh, let me try to copy this reference, right? And then I thought that was like studying. And, and in a way it was, it was studying. But 
the the whole intention of this boot camp series that I'm doing with you guys, which we've tentatively named the artist guide to self studying, um, is that I want to show you guys some efficient techniques you can do to make it so that you can study in a way that lasts a little bit longer, right? Something that will help you in the long run and not just something that you, you know, you copy a reference and then that's it, right? Which, well, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like, let me ask you guys who are watching right now in the chat. How many of you out here feel like you've been studying? You've been out here grinding. You've been trying to do all this. You've been watching YouTube videos, but you're like, Kaysom, I feel like I'm not growing. I feel like I'm not growing fast enough, man. I feel like I've been stuck for like a year. My art skills haven't really improved that much. Maybe there was a period of time where my stuff was growing and it was well. And then it kind of like, I don't know. I keep watching videos. I keep watching the tutorials. What's going on? Sometimes it's not about the amount of stuff that you study, but more so being intentional with the small few things that you do study, right? So we'll go ahead here. I'm just drawing out a basic mannequin. Um, I'm not trying to do too much of the anatomy, but we could if, if you guys want to see some of that. But I'm just trying to drop in like a basic type of mannequin structure here for the character. Just something that we can visualize the forms. And I'm kind of putting in some like, you know, cylindrical shapes and stuff so we can like imagine it a little bit more there. But all right, we've got all that. And let me... Let me go ahead now and let's start applying some of the clothing here. Again, we're just keeping it simple for this character. Uh, I'm not trying to focus on the, the mannequin too much. All right. Anyways, we've got all this. If you guys are interested in like how I break down mannequins or how if you want me to talk about uh, anatomy and stuff, my YouTube channel actually goes over pretty in depth. All of those things. We have like a whole series on that stuff. So you guys can take a look at that. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about anatomy uh, today. Just just a heads up. All right, but let's say we have this, like a simple kind of mannequin form for this character. We're going to go ahead and kind of uh, make it a little bit bigger, right? And then let's go in here and apply some of the things that we've learned and see if, if we can do it, right? And actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's spice it up a little bit. Let's put away the reference. Let's put away, the, let's put away our notes. Let's put away our reference. Let's go ahead and imagine if there was a seam here, like so. So there was the, the fabric on the sleeve, right? It's going to be stitching, stitching on the shirt that this person's wearing. And then here, we're going to also just loosen the fabric a little bit. We're going to bring it down, wrap it around the torso. And then we're going to loosen out here the fabric because gravity is going to work some magic there. And then because the guy is uh, pulling his arms up like so, we're going to keep in mind here some of that tension, right? So we're going to do some of this. And then maybe the fabric also bunches up here like that. We kind of gave this guy a bigger, bigger booty cheeks. So we'll kind of add some of that. Uh, but then we'll kind of go in here and we'll bring out that tension, right? We said we were going to follow the tension here of the fabric. And look at this already. All we're doing is just following the understanding here of fabric. I'm not using the reference. I'm just kind of drawing from imagination here. And we're seeing how it all feels, right? Opening here, creating some space. And then here we kind of drop down like so, right? Maybe we're just gonna we're just gonna cut it off like right here. But we can we can go further down if we wanted to. But we're just utilizing some of the the, the techniques that we had um, here to figure out what's going on. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna also bring in. Now we're gonna wrap this arm around using some fabric. We're gonna go here. Say the gravity is gonna go down on this shoulder right here. So we're gonna kind of chop that out. Okay, cool. Then we're going to go in here like so. And we're going to say, you know what? The fabric is going to still keep wrapping, but it's going to be wrapping a little bit tighter here around this section of the shoulder because that's where the deltoid and the bicep are going to separate. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to go then straight down, maybe let's say. And then over here, we're going to have some loose fabric because again, gravity is going to be doing its thing out here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of a fold right here just to kind of add some of that. And then we're going to still keep it wrapped, wrapped up like so. 
Here, maybe we'll add a fold here for the elbow, just to kind of denote that elbow. And then, what are we going to do? We're going to wrap it back, right? We're going to wrap it back here. The arm is going to wrap back this way, like so, until eventually, it's going to wrap all the way around. And now we have here our trench coat pocket. But yo, chat, that's it. We just, we just made clothing that easy like that, right? I'm telling you guys, once you start studying these things out, you're going to start realizing like, wait a minute, maybe clothing is not that crazy after all, right? Maybe if I study just a little bit here and I try to figure out some of the aspects, oh shoot, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Now, obviously you can do, you can, yeah, it'll still be hard, right? There's going to be other things you can do here. Like for example, maybe we want to add more details right? Maybe we want to add some stuff here. Maybe we want to think about shadows and stuff, but that's going to be a separate part of the studies, right? So here, in terms of what we wanted to study, which was figuring out how the, um, the clothing and stuff wraps around the forms, I would say we did a pretty good job, right? We, we got what we wanted and maybe we'll go in here and tweak a few things out. But for the most part, that's kind of uh, what we were looking for, right? Adding some density, some detail there, the clothing here, the fabric and the folds. Maybe we'll go in here, add uh, the collar as well too. So like, I know clothing is like, this is not like the, wow, look at this clothing is so easy, but it's more like, I think like when you study it, now you can start applying some of these things and now you can take this to other aspects as well. Like maybe we're not using a trench coat. Maybe we're using a different detail, right? A different aspect of clothing. So yeah, let me know if, if seeing this was helpful, by the way, like seeing this demo and seeing how the approach works, because now what I'm going to do is this, right? I'm going to take this and we, we did the drawing and we got this character out and stuff, but now let's go in and let's actually make sure that we've done now that, now that we've done this, right? Let's go in here now and let's take this drawing. Let's go ahead and group this and let's compare it. That's going to remember again, this is the key thing, right? Um, the key thing here is we're going to actually do our comparison and we're going to see like, okay, like how close are we actually? And you know what? I would say not too bad. Okay. I think we're missing. Here's the thing. We're missing some of the parts here for the body. So like there's some other details I didn't add. Right. So there's, you know, for example, um, the shirt's going to go here, all of that, but we don't care about that. Right. We, we mostly cared about the the, the 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 jacket and all that stuff so well, let's just say for from what we had right from what we drew it's not bad so again this is a good exercise that i would recommend right we'll do one more example and then i think from there maybe we'll just start doing some other uh some other stuff but what i like to do is i like to go in here and i like to kind of just compare a little bit with what i'm doing so here i think with the reference they had the tension up a little bit higher and what that does is it kind of creates more of like a round drop. I kind of like that because it actually makes it more spacious. So here's my corrected layer, right? So now I'm looking at what I drew and I can say, okay, you know what? Yeah, I do like how the reference goes a little bit wider here, creates a much larger space. And then this area gets a little bit thinner instead. That's kind of cool, uh, but it doesn't go all the way. And there's actually another fold here that I might've missed. So this one right here, I think really sells the wrapping of the form like so. Okay, so that's cool. So we're going to keep that in mind as we're going to go in here. And then also, uh, let's see. I think we could have dropped this fabric down even more to exaggerate the bagginess of the fabric, the, 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 the thickness of it all. And then here, this is where things get a little interesting. I think this one could have transitioned a little bit more like so. So we, we start transitioning from going boom, boom, boom to boom. So we're like rotating, we're rotating the fabric, uh, the fold of the fabric, right? So there you go. So again, really breaking down some of this, um, some of these folds and stuff, but then applying it ourselves and then going in and actually trying to make some of these corrections. Hopefully that makes some sense there. So again, this is one example of the study, right? So we're going to take the reference, we break down the study ourselves, and then we make a comparison. Highly recommend you guys do that. We'll go ahead now and do another example out here and we'll see how, um, how that example holds true. But we'll take a look at the correction layer, right? Like 
once you start seeing it, you're like, oh, okay, so this is what I did versus this is what the reference is doing. It starts to it starts to make a little bit more sense because then now you can take your own art and you can say, okay, next time I'll watch out. I'll watch out for some of the things that I did. There you go. See, it's cool. I don't know. I enjoy it. I think this is for me like a systematic way of studying that has really allowed me in the last three years go from being a hobby artist, you know, who was doing it on the side while being a software engineer to three years later, now working in the industry. And a lot of that, I think, really has just come back to me pushing that more and more and really trying to study and and give myself feedback and criticisms that isn't negative. Because I know a lot of us artists in the chat, right, people watching this video, it's so easy for us to put ourselves down. It's kind of like a, it's like a canon event in the artist journey, right? At some point in our artist journey, we're going to be roasting ourselves so hard that we might even want to quit drawing altogether. Put an F in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've already gone through one of these or multiple times of this where you just roasted yourself so bad you drew something you're like damn dude my art is so trash what am i even doing why am i an artist i should just quit i'm just done you know what i'm talking about so stay tuned for all of this we've got another reference here um let's go ahead and take a look at that and hopefully hopefully this will be a fun one this will be a good one to 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 crack down on all right so for this one i think i'm mostly interested in the seams of the fabric and in particular looking at how all of these things kind of interlock and paying attention to maybe some of the shapes and stuff as well too so here i like how the fabric for example wraps around so you got this nice shape here and then we have here it looks like a nice kind of like center um, a center line there which we can use to kind of figure out here the clothing right so I'm just going in here and I'm trying to keep it nice and simple. Something like that looks pretty solid there. Always F's in the chat. I know. Also, hi, I draws. Welcome in and Mikey as well. Thank you guys. All right. So we're going to be for this one. I want to look and see if I can simplify some of the shapes, right? Because for this clothing design, I want to understand how the design works. And then let's say I want to take it into an animation, right? Like I like the design here. How do I simplify this for more of an animated look? So what are the key details? This is what I'm looking for here. What are the key details here of this clothing and going in here and trying to break that down? Now, tracing, by the way, isn't the only way to study. Um, we will probably do some other some other aspects here where we can, maybe we don't use a reference or if we're using a reference, we don't do like a draw over. We just, you know, uh, just draw on the side. And so, again, there's a lot of different approaches to studying, which will probably go over in my series here for studying artist guide to self studying. Uh, this one is going to be utilizing some references here just to show you guys and for you guys to be able to uh, follow along. But yeah, this is something that I like to do. So whenever I'm thinking about animation, I'm thinking like, okay, cool. Like what are the, what is the nice key details here of this design that I want to bring back into my own designs? By the way, I've been doing some stuff right here. I'll show you guys right now. Um, I've been designing this character uh, for the Mighty Nine. It's a critical role series that they did for campaign two. This is a character, Caleb Widogast, um, that we were just cooking up on the stream here for funsies. So for those of you guys who are interested in the type of work that I do and all of that in my style, you guys can take a look at this and also my portfolio, which I'll drop, I'll drop on, um, on the, on the Twitch chat there. But yeah, this is, this is the stuff, this is the kind of stuff that I do, uh, for work out here, which is like thinking about how all of these things apply. And then maybe when we draw this one out, I'm going to take a look. I'm actually going to take a look here and see if we can maybe stylize this one a little bit more, right? So here we got like these sleeves and you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm breaking down the main, main components. I'm not looking at all the stitching here. I'm not looking at all the buttons and all the folds. I'm looking at the main components of the clothing and this. And so for this one, I'm really just trying to study like the key details. What makes this clothing different from a t-shirt, let's say, or different from a robe that, like, that a monk would wear, right? 
Maybe it's the puffy sleeves. Maybe it's the, it's the uh, extra additional fabric on the shoulder. We've got here that center line, so we're going to kind of bring that back in here. And then we've got here, the rest is just basically a drop down of a, of a, of a coat. So we'll, we'll think about that. And then we'll talk a little bit about this. So there's a lot of like folding going on here, as you'll see, I'm going to simplify it for you guys, right? Cause I think I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you can simplify stuff, it's, it, it always becomes a lot easier to add details. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to try to figure out, right? I'm going to try to figure out why do these, why do these folds occur? Because I'm going to tell you now, chat, they're not random. They're, they're very much not random and, and we'll, we'll see why they're not random the moment we simplify it. Cause once you see the simplified version, you're going to be like, Oh, okay. I get it now. Right? So here, for example, this clothing fabric, I'm trying to get a straight line here, but this clothing fabric right here, notice how it's bunching out in certain areas. Where is it bunching out? It's bunching out here on that, uh, that center line. So let's, this center line is actually a little bit lower here like that, probably. So they're, and they're coming out from these like tension points right here. Right? So you'll notice you're like, okay, wait a minute. So these are not just random folds. These are folds here that are going to be created because there's tension points right here on the clothing itself. And that's going to create the tension points. And look at this. Look at, look at these folds here. Why do they fold the way that they do? Because of the tension points of the fabric. So again, these are not random folds. These are folds that are created because the fabric is the way that it is. And so when it comes to understanding how to do clothing and you're trying to figure out like, oh, should I put a line here or should I put a line here or should I put the line across this way for a t-shirt? A lot of it really comes down to understanding also the material you're working with and where on this material are things tense and where, where are they not, right? But okay, so we've got here this breakdown. And I think some of the main things I really like about this design is, and things that maybe I want to bring back to my design, so we'll, we'll do our own little drawing here, is I really like this, uh, this like whole section right here, I think is really cool. So I wanna like emphasize that in my design. And then I want to keep maybe a good portion of things simple, right? So, oops, hold on. Why is it? There you go. I also really like the cuffs. So let's keep the cuffs there the same. We'll keep, we'll add detail there. And then I think the other thing I really like is, let's see if there's anything else I really like about the design. I like this, the little tension point thing right here. I think that's very cool. So So again, I'm looking at simplicity here and trying to break down the design. And then when we actually go in here and and maybe take some of these elements, we'll see what we can then try to push, right? Uh and those of you coming in here from the chat, welcome in. We got Romy out here, Ren 18 and everyone else here. Nacho Dusty. Yeah. So rotating a model is going to be hard, but again, part of the trick for rotating a model is to simplify it, right? If you can simplify the design, it becomes a lot easier to do rotations and I'll show you. So we're actually probably going to do some rotations already, but here's an example of a base model rotation that I'm, that I did for a character sheet, right? Simple standard, um, anatomy and forms. We're just rotating the character. And then when it comes to clothing, it's going to be the same principles in terms of understanding how the, how the material works. I'm trying to see if I have a, if I have a rotation sheet here. So a lot of, a lot of character rotation, right? When, especially when you're doing clothing is like keeping some of those key elements, key elements and shapes. So here she has like shoulder pads that are very triangular. So how do we keep that triangular shape across the board uh, when we're rotating our characters? So those are just some examples of rotations, but we'll probably get to that maybe at some point. But uh, let's go ahead and let's knock out another drawing here. So I kind of want to group this one out. All right. So we have all that. Let's go ahead now and let's try to draw our own, our own designs here based off of the studies that we got. And also, Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, Nehru, we appreciate that. So now when it comes to me designing my character and let's say we have a character on the same pose, right? 
we're going to try to utilize some of that design and maybe see if we can get maybe even push it further right like is there anything we can do now to keep some of that design in just your i'm just drawing boxes for this one you know but you can draw whatever you want for your mannequin designs if you want to do cylindrical forms you want to do a rounded pelvis you know really doesn't matter just gonna go ahead and do that but I do hope um, I do hope that seeing this process is helpful to you guys. Again, I want to I want to emphasize that today's stream isn't about how to draw clothing, because like with anything that you learn when you're when you're getting into art, there are so many different ways to learn how to do something. And if there's anything that I want to teach you guys, it's more about how I study different things and then apply that back into my own art and how you can do that with your art as well. That's really the the main thing I'm trying to uh, give you guys information on. It's it's really less about like, oh, this is how you have to do clothing. You have to do it this way with the shapes and stuff. You can do it very differently. Maybe you want to focus on the details and the rendering. You know, maybe you really want to exaggerate the forms or you, you want to go for a more cartoony, simplified style, right? Everyone has a different preference and style. And so it's really up to you to figure out how you can translate the things that you're learning in your studies into your own, uh, you know, your own drawings and illustrations and stylistic work. But something that I, uh, advice that I would give, if you want to take it, is I always like to draw in the characters, uh, the mannequin, even, even if I'm doing clothing, right? Like, even if I'm going to be drawing a gigantic poncho, on my character, I'm always still adding in here the clothing on top, or sorry, the uh, the the body and the mannequin underneath, because at the end of the day, it's it's only going to help you to be able to understand um, understand what's going on with the clothing on top, because the clothing will change depending on what it's uh, what's underneath it, right? So if you have a very muscular character versus a very skinny character or a much larger, you know. A fatter character, the clothing will fit differently on all all of these characters, and so being able to go in and alter your designs based off of the understanding of the uh, the form underneath will help out tremendously. But here we're just going to do a generic muscle man type of character here. All right, um, well we got here this this mannequin. Just kind of a quick thing. Again, I'm not trying to focus on making it look super nice, but we just. We got all that. Let's go ahead and kind of design our clothing now for this character. So let's go ahead and see. So for something like this, when it comes to clothing, sometimes what I like to do is I like to really push a certain narrative. So maybe for this character, we're going to go for this like trapezoidal look for the clothing. So maybe we go with that and I try to exaggerate more you know i really want to give him this like dramatic feel for his character design and so maybe for the uh, for the sleeves here i'm actually going to go in a little bit extra right and just kind of pop them out a little bit more like so really go and push that t-shaped design here for this guy like really make him feel like he's he's massive he's built And so we're going to do that on both sides right here. We're also going to consider, obviously, the, the perspective and all that. But, okay, we're like, cool. I like that, right? It's, we're, we're pushing the shape design further. We're keeping it relatively the same. But, again, uh, there's a few subtle changes now that I'm trying to go for. And so this is kind of how I study shape design uh, when I'm using references. I'm looking for the key things. The key things I really want to go crazy with and exaggerate, like maybe this is the part of the design of the character that I go in and really add more details for, right? Like maybe I'll throw in some extra uh, details right here, or maybe there's like an aspect of a logo on the character, like a, their, their crest or something. So, you know, in character design, um, and, and it depends, right? So it depends on what your, what your, uh, what you're designing for but for example in in animation because we're so limited by the amount of details we can put in on a particular drawing and also the budget and just overall what people actually see oftentimes what we do in animation is we'll choose we'll choose like particular details we'll say you know what 
We're going to make the, the top part of this character really detailed. And then everything else, like the, the sleeve right here, let's just make it simple, right? There's no need to make it detailed if it's not even going to get looked at. So we're going to go in there, simplify all of that, bring that down, and then we'll exaggerate here because I really like the sleeves. We're going to go for a much more tapered look here where maybe we like, uh, maybe it's a little bit higher, right? So we go like here and I go in here and I kind of like taper out the sleeve a bit more. So like really exaggerating that trapezoidal shape. I don't know. Well, we're just playing around with it. Okay. And then um, let's even simplify some of these designs. So like we'll bring this down here. Um, I also really like, again, the, the, the two little nubs right here. So we're going to keep that detail in there and we're going to emphasize. So instead of like here, we're going to keep all the clothing simple, right? We're going to match the design here of the character. But wh where I think maybe we can add more detail in is how the fabric interacts with these two points right here. So we'll really like utilize that as our center point for um, adding in fabric and maybe adding in some uh, some clothing or not clothing, uh, clothing folds. Maybe we'll taper this design a little bit more too. So we'll like really shrink them down a bit. And then we'll, uh, we'll go down here. And this is what I was talking about earlier. But the reason why, guys, the folds are moving the way that they do. And I'll take notes here. I'll show you guys. The reason why they're going in the way that, that they do is because there's actually the, the tension point right here, right? This tension of that, that uh, portion there of the back is going to make it so that this right here will have more tension and things will wrap around it similarly here. And so because you have these two tension points, naturally what's going to happen is underneath them or sorry, between them, they're going to loop like this, right? Uh, similarly here, there's some tension with him kind of pinching against the fabric and there's probably a seam right here as well in the jacket. So this is also going to go in here and it's going to go whoop. It's going to loop, right? So paying attention to why these folds and these things are actually curving instead of just randomly going in like this, like let's be real. You can do that. But I've also, you know, I've seen, I've seen TikTok videos and I don't mean to roast TikTok videos. I've seen videos where people are like, you want to learn how to draw a skirt? All you got to do is draw random squiggly and then draw the lines. Right. But they don't tell you, they don't tell you why it's, it's doing the thing that it does. Right. And they don't tell you where, where do you put the lines? Do you put it here? Do you put a line here instead? Right. And so understanding why certain things move the way they do, that, that they do will actually help you out tremendously um, with your designs. So here we're going to be using the same principles, right? So we're going to be uh, taking the design of this character and I'm going to just utilize some of that knowledge there, knowing that these are going to be tension points. I'm going to go ahead, right? I'm going to bring that out here like so. And I'm going to bring this one out here as well. And then I'm going to figure out, okay, how do we go from A to B? We're going to wrap here back to that center. We're going to wrap here like that. Like maybe what we'll do is I'll fan it out too, right? So maybe we'll like bring out the fabric a bit more like that. Just to, again, exaggerate some of the, that silhouette design, right? There it is. All right. And then with that, we'll do the other side right here. Um, this sleeve is just going to go drop down as well. Maybe I'll add a little bend here for the elbow, but otherwise we've got here the sleeve. We've got here this one right here. I'm going to, I'm going to push that cuff in a little bit more. And there you go. Easy peasy. We did a study, but we also changed it up. We added our own stylistic elements. Um, and then if I wanted to go in here, obviously I'm going to go in, make it a little bit darker, like right here, maybe. Uh, maybe right here, we're going to add some ambient occlusion to kind of push in some of the pocket there, right? Really create some of that depth that's underneath. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this one. For those of you watching live on YouTube, this is going to be the part of the video where everyone in my chat says, buy YouTube, because if you're not here watching me live on Twitch, you are going to be missing out 
on a lot of different things. So please go check me out on uh, on Twitch, guys. Everyone in the chat's gonna be saying bye, YouTube. So see ya. Go check this out. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are watching from YouTube. Uh, but otherwise, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Peace. See ya.